Hello and welcome back everyone to the Y Engineering presentation. Um, I would like to start off by respectfully acknowledge the land that UBC has built its Okanagan, Okanagan campus on, which we learn, connect and innovate is the unceded territory of the Silix Okanagan peoples. And the Vancouver campus is on the traditional ancestral and unceded lands of the Musqueam peoples. So I'm often asked, what is engineering? It seems like such a simple question, but the definition of what it means to be an engineer continues to evolve. At its core, engineering is the process of using science and math to solve problems. The discipline and profession is perfect for people who look at a challenge and ask the questions, why and how can I make it better? So today, while you participate in our open house and when you come back tomorrow, I invite you to ask questions, explore engineering programs and learn more about our community. UBC Engineering offers a caring community that emphasizes inclusivity and respect for all. That is often evident in the resources and supports that our students receive, whether in the classroom, labs or elsewhere on campus. What you will discover is that our community campuses and our engineering programs are just the start of what, true, what can truly be a unique post-secondary experience for you. So every aspect of our built environment has been touched by an engineer, from our roads and bridges to manufacturing processes, from the way vaccines are delivered or biomedical advances, or even our ability to recharge batteries. All these things came about because of an engineer. So when you think about an engineer, what skills come to mind? From chatting with our current engineering students and alumni, there are many different skills that can be used to describe an engineer. And today we wanted to share a few that highlight what makes a career in engineering so great. So solving problems is an inherently creative act. Our current program chair of electrical engineering and computer engineering at the UBC Okanagan campus recently shared, I would say to any student that this is a field that requires creativity. It requires a passion. There are scientific and engineering principles and you're essentially an artist working with scientific principles to solve a problem and create things. Engineering is a versatile degree and enables you to start working in your field right away. Many people also choose engineering as an undergraduate degree before pursuing law, medicine, business, or graduate school. Their training as an engineer gives them strong leadership and organizational abilities, as well as the skills, knowledge, and mindset for academic and professional success. One of the most significant components of an engineering degree is learning how to navigate the design cycle, which requires us to identify problems and find solutions to these problems. A lot of time, we need to try a lot of things that don't work before we find the things that do. It really is finding success and failure that allows us allows for a more creative solution. It is how we navigate challenges and setbacks when finding solutions to problems that builds our resiliency in the workforce, in our personal lives, and globally. The challenges that engineers tackle are complex often requiring the skills and insights of teams of individuals representing a range of expertise and perspective. Engineers are adept at collaborating with others to create solutions. Engineers also have a big picture view of how systems fit together and how a change in one area will affect something down the line. There is never just one solution to an engineering challenge. There are always multiple solutions and figuring out the best approach requires taking the time to understand the complexities of a problem from the numerous perspectives. This also makes engineers strong team players because they know that solving complex problems often requires teams of individuals with diverse expertise. So engineers are developing solutions to our global challenges. Our students, alumni, and professors are continuing to showcase the impact that they can make on our world through their research and actions. And you saw some of those today if you just um, were here for our research spotlights. So a couple more examples of that is at the Vancouver campus, their chemical engineers have developed a new treatment that traps and treats PFAS substances widely known as forever chemicals in a single integrated system. So this integrated system combines an activated carbon filter with a specially pat patented catalyst that traps harmful chemicals and breaks them down in into harmless components on that filter material. 
And if you were just here for our research spotlights, you would have had a chance to um, see Dr. Good talk to us about um, the new mechanical heart valve that was developed at the UBC Okanagan campus um, in the heart valve performance lab. This image here on the screen on the left shows him holding a piece of that heart valve, and this is called the eye valve. Um, the eye valve combines the best of the mechanical and tissue valve designs and has been specifically designed for high heart rate applications, um, such as pediatric patients. So there are so many reasons to pursue a degree in engineering, and there are so many different paths into engineering. Some students enter directly from high school, while others decide to pursue a transfer program, and others even wait a few years after graduation or years after working. Whatever your path may be, engineering is a way to make the world a better place for our families, our communities, our countries, and for humanity. Engineering provides a solid education in problem solving, analysis, and the application of knowledge. So no matter what you want to do in the future, you have a great foundation to continue in engineering or whatever else you would like to do. We have shared quotes here from two of our engineering students on, uh, on this slide, showcasing why they chose to pursue engineering. We have many current students here at our virtual open house today and tomorrow. Um, some of them are answering your questions in the event chat right now. And we have some panelists who are joining us shortly for our sessions after our Y Engineering presentation, who are looking forward to sharing their stories with you. So we encourage you to continue asking questions throughout this open house to learn more about the many reasons our students choose engineering. So now I'm going to pass it over to Franco to share more about engineering at UBC. Awesome. Thanks so much, Marie. Uh, so Marie has, of course, chatted about why engineering overall is a great career path. Uh, now let's talk about why you should study engineering specifically here at UBC. So if you choose to join us here, you'll be joining a university which is globally recognized for its excellence in teaching and research, as well as its global impact. World University rankings such as Times Higher Education ranks UBC as number two in Canada, within the top 50 universities in the world and number one in industry, innovation and infrastructure. Now, when we look at UBC engineering specifically, for 2024, McLean's has ranked UBC engineering as the number two engineering program in Canada based on program and research reputation. We're also home to the largest co-op program in Western Canada, where we have fantastic employer partnerships to set you up for success. We'll talk a little bit more about co-op later on. Now, overall, to sum up the slide, if you join us here at UBC, you'll be joining one of the top ranked universities in the world. Now, there are two ways to get a, a, an engineering degree from UBC. You can study at our beautiful Okanagan campus in Kelowna, or also equally beautiful campus in Vancouver on the west side of our city. The campuses are about a four and a half hour drive apart from one another, or if you choose to fly, it's about an hour apart. While the feel of each campus will be a little bit will be different, uh, both campuses engineering programs are equally prestigious and accredited. So where you'll be learning or working professors who are leaders in their fields. No matter which campus you start at, you're going to start in the foundational first year where you're going to start building the foundation of your degree. So you'll take courses in engineering design, chemistry, physics, math, and English before continuing into your program and into your program and completing your degree at that campus. Now, a common question that we always get from students, how do I know which campus is right for me? Uh, personally, I think it is a personal choice. Uh, overall, we do highly recommend that you begin at the campus that you plan to finish at. So the recommendation here is to take the opportunity to explore the different unique opportunities and lifestyles offered at both campuses and surrounding areas. Now, if you aren't able to visit the campuses or cities in person, that's OK, too. Uh, we have virtual campus tours available at both campuses. And you can also ask some current questions, uh, some current students questions through our chat with the current student program. Over at our Okanagan campus, uh, we offer five different engineering undergraduate programs to choose from. Uh, so you see these on the screen right now. We have civil, computer, electrical, mechanical and manufacturing engineering here. Uh, so students will choose their program at the end of that foundational first year through the second year placement process. Now at the UBC Okanagan campus, uh, engineering students are guaranteed placement in any of the five engineering programs. So during the second year placement process, students simply select the engineering program that they like to continue in uh, for the remainder of their degree. So for example, if you're interested in civil engineering, you're guaranteed a seat in civil engineering. 
Now over at our Vancouver campus, uh, we have 14 engineering disciplines for students to choose from. Now after completing the foundational first year, uh, students at the Vancouver campus will go through the second year placement process and it's a little bit different than the Okanagan campus. Uh, at Vancouver, it is a competitive process uh, to place students in a discipline. So all students will submit a placement form where, where they will rank their preferred disciplines and provide a 500 word personal statement. Everyone will be notified about their program placements before second year course registration begins. Throughout your first year, you'll have lots of time to learn more about each of the disciplines and find your best fit. We always encourage students to consider that there are many programs that may suit the field of engineering that maybe you would like to work in. So another example I can pull up right now, for example, maybe you wanna work in biomedical engineering. You may of course consider biomed biomedical engineering as a top choice, um, or you may even wanna consider mechanical engineering which offers a biomechanics and medical devices option. Or you can also consider electrical engineering, which offers a biomedical option. So there are many, many ways that to help you achieve your career goals and we'll make sure you're supported in that. Overall, students at both campuses will learn lots more about the placement process throughout their first year. Now, if you are interested in learning more about each of the programs from both campuses, I um, highly recommend and suggest you take a look at our expo section if you are, haven't already done so and watch the pre-recorded videos about each of our programs. Uh, this will help you prepare to ask questions to our program representatives tomorrow uh, when they join us live on Friday uh, from 5.15 to 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. Now, as I mentioned earlier, no matter which campus that you start off at, you're gonna be starting in that foundational first year to learn about the courses that are the foundation of your degree. So again, these include your engineering design courses, chemistry, physics, math, and English before continuing in your program and completing your degree at that campus. So you'll be introduced to the design cycle right away in your first year courses. So what that can look like at the Vancouver campus, uh, you'll start off in AppSci 100, where you'll learn how to think like an engineer and what it means to be an engineer. So typically in this course, students are uh, working on a series of group projects. The first group project is the cardboard chair where you'll be challenged to build a chair using a four foot by four foot piece of cardboard and you're not allowed to use any tape or or any other adhesives so you and your classmates will be challenged to find new ways to for example hold a 250 pound boulder or a person and you'll be graded based on how much weight it can hold the size of it how comfortable the chair is and how portable it is when it's deconstructed these projects continue into second term uh, where you'll move into appsci 101 and uh, a, com uh, a, a project from there is you'll be challenged to design, build, and automate a fully autonomous claw retrieval system. And here you and your team members will be judged on how many different objects it can pick up, how precise they can be, uh, working with other teams to pick up larger objects. So through these experiences, you're gonna build your technical skills in design, fabrication, and coding, but also working and developing on your soft skills, uh, such as teamwork, communication, and leadership. And these are, of course, all important skills for good engineers. Over at our Okanagan campus, of course, you get that same experience as well, but your, your products will look a little bit different. Uh, for example, in, at the Okanagan campus, our students will go into AppSci 169 to learn more about sustainable engineering design. You'll work on a variety of projects with real world implications. In fact, many teams have gone on to compete in challenges such as the Engineering Day Hackathon and the Aqua Hacking Challenge. In term two, you'll move into AppSci 171, which focuses on engineering drawing and 3D modeling. At the end of this course, you'll participate in the iconic end of term design competition, where the top 30 design teams go head to head in front of a panel of judges, including industry partners and faculty. Last year, the students focused on design solutions for wildfires, such as detecting spot or smoldering fires after a wildfire has passed through. And a sample of one of those tools is actually pictured on the right side of the screen. Now, as mentioned earlier, our foundational first year will help you learn more about all the programs before you make your decision and starting your specialized program in second year. So again, when you join us, you're gonna get lots more information about how that process works. Now, I think one of the best things about studying in university is the ability to be able to customize your student experience. So now I'm gonna to toss it back over to Marie to discuss how you can do that. Thanks so much, Franco. So like Franco mentioned already, from the very start, you're gonna be exposed to that hands-on design projects, 
as you're working through that foundational first year and really learning about what type of engineering is right for you, what program you want to continue um, with for the rest of your degree. So throughout those, the rest of your degree, you're going to have courses year after year that build on those project based team learning experiences, culminating in your final year with something called your capstone design project, where you and your peers work with industry partners to solve a real world problem. Some capstone projects have actually become startups or have allowed students to secure jobs upon graduation. Engineering students at UBC are encouraged to explore experiential learning opportunities to customize their degree. So students who are, might be interested in research um, have the opportunity to gain paid research experience, or you can participate in a club like the Undergrad Research Organization who helps pair students with areas of research that they are interested in. Later on in your degree, you can also customize your studies by choosing to pursue a minor, which is a secondary area of study. This is not a requirement, but will allow you to have a secondary focus. You can also look into our dual degree programs, as well as the options or concentrations, which Franco mentioned a few before. You can also um, have the opportunity to gain paid work experience through our co-op program. You could join an engineering design team, or if you are interested in traveling abroad, you can apply to do that to work, research, or study. So I would recommend that you check out our student experience panel that's happening tomorrow to learn more about our students' experience and different ways that they may have customized their degrees. So one way that our students find their passion is by joining a design team where they can design and create projects outside of the classroom. There are many design teams, clubs, and affiliated chapters at both campuses to expand your network, find your community, and develop expertise in your field of study. In fact, there are four design teams at the UBC Okanagan campus and over 30 design teams at the Vancouver campus that allow students to gain hands-on engineering experience outside of the classroom. These design teams focus on many areas of engineering, um, and some of them are chemical and biological engineering, aerospace, automotive, watercraft, and sustainability, but this is just naming a few of those areas. So the image on the slide here shows our Great Northern Concrete Toboggan team from the UBC Okanagan campus. So last February, they won first place overall in the Great Northern Concrete Toboggan race. For this competition, each competing team had to design and build a toboggan with concrete sliding surfaces, a safety roll cage, and a mechanical steering and braking system. Each toboggan must weigh less than 160 kilograms or under 350 pounds and carry five competitors. So for this competition each year, the students race their toboggans at different ski hills across Canada. So the picture here shows um, our toboggan that they built um, uh, and the students uh, after they were competing on um, one of the ski hills. So in general, our design teams compete across Canada and internationally every year. And this is just one example of a cool project that you could be a part of. So it doesn't matter what engineering program you're in or which UBC campus you decide to attend, there are gonna be teams there for you. So while school is a great way to explore your interests, we should also appreciate the power of community. By learning about the experiences of your peers, instructors, and UBC staff, you may be able to learn about an interest or a career path you never knew about. You, we already mentioned our design teams, but there are lots of clubs to get involved with. Whether you want to join something related to engineering or something completely different, there are hundreds of options at UBC. We also have the Engineering Undergraduate Societies at both the Vancouver and Okanagan campus and our Engineering Inclusivity, Diversity, Equity, Advancement for Student Clubs for members of the 2SLGBTQIA community, women, Black, and Indigenous students. UBC has one of the largest co-op programs in Western Canada. Co-op helps students gain work experience while getting paid and will give students a competitive advantage when they graduate. This is also a great way to develop technical skills, make industry connections, and test out career options. Students interested in co-op will be able to indicate their intent to participate in the program if they meet the program requirements early in their second year of study. Most of our co-op positions are located in Canada, but there are jobs located around the world in the US, Germany, Japan, Australia, and more. Last year, 102 co-op students worked internationally across 16 different countries. 
Some of the top com companies that have hired our students include Tesla, Microsoft, Amazon, Suncor Energy, and Tech Resources. Our co-op program also provides great training, such as how to build your resume and interview prep to help prepare our students when they start searching and applying for co-op jobs. This training and the students' hard work applying for positions is clearly reflected through the impressive 3,021 work terms secured in 2023. So again, I would check out the panels we have um, following this presentation, but also our student experience panel on the stage tomorrow. And you can visit the co-op booth during the program fair tomorrow if you have more, more questions about our co-op program. So there are so many opportunities awaiting you at UBC to help you figure out your interests and equip yourself with the skills you need to excel in your future career. We have had many alumni use engineering as the foundation for their career, like Bowen Ma, who is the MLA for North Vancouver Lonsdale, and have lots of alumni who have gone on to work at some of the biggest companies like Tesla, Google, Apple, and so many more. So now you may be wondering, so, so what's next? So if you're currently in grade 11 or younger, we encourage you to check out UBC's undergraduate programs and admissions webpage to learn more about how to apply and what UBC looks for. This also has information about the specific degree requirements, that's like the high school courses that you're gonna to wanna to be taking, as well as things like the personal profile, which will be part of your application. So if you're in grade 12, and if you're interested in applying to UBC, it's great news, applications are now open. So we highly encourage you to apply before December 1st, but the final deadline is January 15th. So again, more details can be found on the u.ubc.ca website that was shown at the previous slide, but also at the bottom of this slide here. So what I wanna note is that one of the main reasons we encourage applications by December 1st is so that you can be considered for some of the merit-based UBC scholarships if you are a Canadian applicant. We also highly recommend attending our UBC Engineering Admissions presentation happening on the stage tomorrow um, at 4.35 p.m. Pacific time, as this will be a great overview of the admissions process and degree specific requirements. So before we close out uh, this presentation today, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who's joining us today. We look forward to seeing you all in our next sessions right after this and back here again uh, tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you.